Suppose that you're a traveling salesman and you've actually got a pretty good gig. First of all, your route includes one city for each natural number, which you go to in turn. And second of all, at each of these cities, you make countably infinitely many sales and you get countably infinitely many dollars. Now, this is obviously a pretty good deal for you, but over time, the cities notice that, hey, this guy is uh, actually doing infinitely many dollars worth of business in our cities, and we're not getting anything from it. So they decide to charge a modest entrance fee. And they're going to try and be nice. They don't want to take everything from you. So... When you arrive at a city, before you get off the train, before you make any sales, they're either going to take nothing from you, if you have nothing at that point, so you're never going to go into debt, or if you have some dollars, they'll choose one and take it from you. So let's see what happens under these rules. Now when you arrive at city zero you'll have nothing so city zero won't take anything from you so that's the same as before and you'll make your countably infinitely many dollars you then go on to city one however now you have the countably infinitely many dollars from city zero so they'll take one from you and you'll make countably infinitely more dollars at city one now you move on to city two and a similar thing happens. They'll take a dollar, for example, a dollar that you made in city one, and you'll make your infinitely many dollars in city two and proceed so on like this. So this isn't uh, too bad because you still make countably infinitely many dollars at the end of the day and also the cities get their entrance fees. However, you suddenly realize something quite worrying, which is that actually how much money you make depends on which physical dollars the cities decide to take as their entrance fees. For example, if instead of taking the dollars in the way we previously imagined, the cities took the dollars from you in this way, then you'd actually be left with nothing after visiting all the cities. So you're quite disturbed by this and you wonder what you can do to try and protect yourself from this. And you think to yourself, well, you know, I make countably infinitely dollars at each city and I'm only charged one per city. So if I need to make more, maybe I should just go to more cities. And, you know, it seems like you would go into a lot of cities because you're going to one for each natural number, but you could go to more. For example, you say to yourself, well, right now I'm going to one city for each finite ordinal and stopping before omega. What if I were to go to one city for each countable ordinal and stop before omega one, which is uh, the first uncountable ordinal? And the amazing thing is that this case is even worse than before in that there's actually nothing the cities can do to be nice. No matter what they do, they will always take everything from you if you visit every countable ordinal. In order to see why this is so, let's use a lemma. And the lemma is that for any countable ordinal alpha, there is a greater countable ordinal f of alpha such that when you arrive at f of alpha, you will have no dollars. Now, let's first see why knowing the lemma is true will show the result that no matter what the cities do, you will end up with zero dollars. So suppose not. Suppose that you did end up with at least one dollar after visiting every cannibal ordinal. That dollar which you had had to have been acquired at some alpha, some city alpha. But then you would have lost that dollar by city f of alpha because when you arrive at f of alpha, you have zero dollars by the lemma. So that's a contradiction. You lost that dollar, so you couldn't have had it at the end. 
Now, to prove this lemma, we'll first define f, and then we'll show that it has the required properties. And in this definition, as kind of a shorthand, I'll use a visual indicator. So each coin which you receive is either taken away at some point or not. And in fact, they'll all be taken away, but we don't know that yet. And so I'll use a green coin to indicate a coin which is in fact taken away at some countable ordinal. Now, given such a coin, we'll let G of that coin be the stop that it was taken away at. And given a countable ordinal alpha, we'll let H of alpha be the supremum over G of each coin which you had when you arrived at alpha that's eventually taken in a way. So another way to say that is that H of alpha is the stop such that when you get there, every coin that you had at alpha, which will be taken away, has already been taken away. And one thing to note is that the fact that H of alpha is a countable ordinal depends on the fact that a countable supremum of countable ordinals is countable. So given any alpha, we can now iterate this H function. So we have H of alpha, H of H of alpha, which we'll write like this, H iterated three times applied to alpha, and so forth. And we now define F of alpha to be the supremum of all these iterates of H applied to alpha. And once again, this is a countable ordinal because a countable supremum of countable ordinals is a countable ordinal. So finally, why does this definition of F satisfy the lemma? Which recall is that for any alpha at F of alpha, you arrive with zero dollars. So suppose that at F of alpha, you arrive with some dollars. And now the city has to take one of them from you. Whatever their scheme is, they have to take one dollar from you. And you had to acquire that dollar at some previous city. Say it's beta. Now, beta has to be below some element of this sequence. Alpha, H of alpha, H2 of alpha, H3 of alpha, etc. Say it's below H2 of alpha. Doesn't matter. But then by the definition of H, it had to be taken from you by H3 of alpha because H3 of alpha has the property that all coins that will be taken that you had at H2 of alpha have already been taken. And you had this coin at H2 of alpha, so it, it must have been taken by H3 of alpha. And that's the proof. So I hope you enjoyed this and found this interesting. I would like to uh, give a lot of thanks to 3Blue1Brown, who is a uh, math YouTuber who produces excellent videos, and I recently found out uh, has open sourced his animation software, which is what I've used to make this. And you know, I'm still getting the hang of it, but I think that it's going to be very important you know, um, for the future of education in uh, mathematics. So thanks, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.